Welcome to Inspiration Rising. My name is David Trotter, and I'm a transformation coach dedicated to inspiring women and the men who support them to rise up in life, love, and leadership. Well, is now the time to start a new business? Today, that's the question that I'm asking Kristen Boss. She's a mindset and business coach who specializes in helping women build their influence and grow successful businesses that deeply align with their purpose. With nearly 15 years of experience working in service and marketing, she's pivoted from celebrity hairstylist to boutique owner to business coach. And with her experience of creating businesses from scratch, she is now helping other women tap into their highest self and true potential. Now, before we jump into this episode, I want to invite you to join the Inspiration Rising Insiders Facebook group. If you're looking to be around other encouraging people, this is the place to be. It's where we talk about the episodes, share inspirational quotes, and exclusive coaching content. And of course, it's absolutely free. Join through the easy link. It's insporising.com slash insiders. That's insporising.com slash insiders. Answer a couple of questions and we'll invite you right in. All right, let's jump into my conversation with Kristen Boss. Well, Kristen, thanks so much for taking some time to hang with me today. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So we are in the middle of this coronavirus chaos, coronacation, whatever you want to call it. (laughs) How do I know if now is the right time to pivot and start a business, perhaps a business that's online, rather than sticking it out with my job or going back after furlough or whatever my situation might be? How do I know that now is the right time for me to start something on my own? I think a really good question you have to ask yourself is whose need you're seeking to meet. Are you seeking to meet your own needs because this is a desire you have for yourself or because you're seeking to need to meet a need that you see in the marketplace that others would gladly pay for. There is a difference with, I'm going to go out for myself because I'm I'm bored and frustrated to, I see a way I can serve and grow and provide a solution to meet this need. So really evaluating your why, uh, your purpose, um, and then just evaluating like, uh, yeah, motive. Motive is a really big one. <laughs> and just, are you in a position to embrace a learning curve. Am I in the position to embrace a learning curve? Meaning this is not going to be a walk in the park. No, you don't get to just say, I think I'm just going to start a business. It, you, it might be if you understand, if you have the awareness of your own strengths and how you can leverage them. And if you see an immediate need that needs to be met in the marketplace, you could see explosive growth, but there also is are you new? Is there a brand you have to be willing to? Are you in this for the long term? Is Are you in it for the long game? That's key. And so part of that probably means that either you have a savings that you can draw upon or somebody else is supporting you or you, right, there's a way that you're going to make it financially during the time in which you're building your brand and establishing your niche and so forth. Yeah, I would say if you don't have a brand, you don't have a sense of a need that you want to meet yet in the marketplace. If you are in a job, uh, I say to use your job as like your investor as your dream. And it helps you show up with less bitterness of oh, going to a job I don't love instead of, hey, these are more investors. I'm going to show up for them. And this in turn is going to be investment in building what's meaningful to me. Uh, so yeah, leveraging your existing job, or if you have someone that is, you know, a primary breadwinner at home, that's happy to support you in your learning curve, do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is such a great way of seeing it is them as your investors. You know, I have done marketing for the last 12 years. I still have marketing clients and I look at it as they, they are paying me to have the opportunity to do these other things that I want to do. My first priority is to them. I've got to make sure they're happy. I got to make sure that I'm doing a great job for them. But I love that seeing them as investors. They're helping me do this other thing that I want to do as well. That that's really a cool visual. You know, you talked about this um, motivation of uh, whether it's for me or for the meeting a need of somebody else. It's probably a combination. There's probably mixed mm-hmm. uh, up in in there. How do I know if the need that I sense? isn't just my neighbor who has the need, but that there are actually a a large enough uh, number of people who would buy my product. How would I determine that? 
I mean, yes. my, my neighbor says that they'd buy it from me. I should start this business right away. <laughs> yeah, this is where you definitely want to see if there's viability and if there's a need and do market research. So re- ask people, do some data gathering and say, is this of value to you? What would you pay for this? What's important to you? What solutions have you tried in prior to this? Honestly, uh, part of the reason why when I decided to pivot into my business, it exploded was because I Remember, I was actually quarantined to a funky eye virus I got in August. And so I was in my house for 10 days and I decided to call people. I called 23 people to be like, is this a need? How do you feel? Is this important to you? What would you... Because viability and market research was important to me. Mm -hmm. So calling people and Mm -hmm. some, I would even suggest some that you don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise, they probably are going to not want to hurt your feelings if they're, you know, want to be nice to you or something. How would I even get people that I don't know on the phone to ask them if this is something that they would buy from me? Yeah. So there's a couple approaches. I just did it from, uh, I did two. I did my Facebook, my personal Facebook page, and I did kind of a blanket statement on who I thought might be the target audience I was going to serve. So I said, if, if this is you, you deal with this, you struggle with this and you want this, I'm, I have a project in the works. I'd love to have 20 minutes of your time. If it's possible to ask you a few questions for market research. And I had a bunch of people reach out And then also going into Facebook groups and of people that, of the people you're looking to serve, what kind of Facebook group they're hanging out in and just say, Hey, I'm looking to meet, to chat and connect with a few people who are experiencing this. I'd love your feedback for some, for some market research. You have to be careful on some Facebook groups. Some are really sensitive to that, but um, yeah, that it's a great way to go about it. Hmm. Okay. So if I feel like I have an idea that could meet a need, Uh, And I feel like I've done some market research. How do I get started? Like, what's the first thing? You know, I feel like some people go, I've got to, I got to get this logo and I'm going to, you know, get a logo (laughs) tournament focused and I've just got to get this thing and it's got to look right. You know what I mean? Like some people, other people is like, I got to get this website or I need business cards. I need business cards. Come on, Kristen, I need business cards. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like there's so many little things that can be rabbit trails and getting Mm -hmm. started. What do you think is the first thing that if you got an idea, you've possibly done some market research, where do you go from there? Yeah, it's definitely not getting caught up in websites and business cards and logos and decorating your office. I ground my clients from doing that. I say those can be milestones of celebration in your business, not precursors. But a great way to start is uh, selling is a form of serving. So serve. And if this is something that you're going to do long term, it better be something you love. And what better way to know that you love it than doing it for free? So I just served those people and offered like mini training sessions, mini sessions to learn from them and see, is this enjoyable? Am I good at this? And can I yield results? And it was a win-win for everybody because the person received great training or a great expertise or skill set. And I learned and saw this is in fact a need. I do in fact love it. Now we go on. Interesting. Okay. So you said that serving is a form of selling or selling is a form of serving. Which one, which way do I do it? Yes. (laughs) Yes. Okay. All right. Both, 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 both. Yes. All right. So the idea is that I'm helping someone in some form or fashion. Now, let's just say that I've got a product, not just a service. Because if a service I could give away, it's my time. Perhaps there's a bit of uh, hard cost involved. Let's just say it's a product. How do I how do I give it away as a way of serving? You know what I mean? Help me see that. Yeah. So if it's a product, what I would do is look for a couple key people and asking, hey, if I provide you this product for free in exchange, would you provide me your honest feedback, a testimonial, a review? Uh, Payment is always an exchange of value. So if I'm not getting a monetary value from them, there might be value of the referral, testimonial, word of mouth. So just putting that into place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking about a woman who is just in my last um, coaching group, and she had a vision for a uh, interior design business. Hmm. And she had done it for all of her friends. They had just asked her, you know what I mean? Like, cause they saw that she had a knack for that. And they had just asked her over the last few years, she had done it as a gift to them or whatever. Now she was 
thinking, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot. I want to make this into my business. And her first step was she, you know, focused on the blog because the people that she admired that were on TV, they had a blog and they, you know, they got business that way and they had fun with their blog and everything. And, you know, I just told her, I go, I just, I don't think anybody cares about your blog. You know, I mean, I hate to tell you, you can have fun with it, but nobody's going to, at this point, nobody cares about this. So she ended up uh, going on thumbtack.com. I think it's called thumbtack.com, whatever. It's a place where you can offer your services. Kristen, she offered her services on there. She had three calls within a couple of days for her services. Mm Mm-hmm. She had some testimonials from her friends up there. She had no website. She had no business card. She had no logo. She had nothing. All she did was offer to help. Isn't that crazy? Just serving, just showing up and being willing to serve. Yeah. 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 And in the process, what was beautiful about it is it required her to ask questions and us to process them on everything from, wow, how do I, how do I do this? Do I have a contract? How do I charge for this? How do I, you know, and it's kind of fun is those things um, oftentimes, yeah, it would be great if you figured those out ahead of time, but you can kind of figure them out as you go, right? Yeah. What are, what are some things that you find that your clients are kind of figuring it out as they go? Uh, I think content creation and what speaks to their audience, what matters to their audience. Um, Also, who they want to work with. I think uh, you can start with an idea of who your your ideal client is, and then as you continue to work, it it will shift and change. And just I have to tell all of my clients, nothing is in cement. It's okay. We can adjust and adapt. And some of them get so terrified with making decisions because they treat it like it's in cement. They don't make decisions at all. So I'm like, no. It's not cement. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Even like from the a vision statement or like some, you know, content on a website, it's like, you know, we can change this, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. always crafting my vision statement. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, nah, today it feels more, feels more aligned here. <laughs> so it sounds like it's important to have a, a, a target audience, a niche of who you're going to go after, but knowing that um, the people that you serve might change over time based on that you go, Oh, I really feel like I resonate with this group or boy, that was not a good experience. I'm not, I don't want to head that on that road. Yeah. I would say having fluidity in your business, uh, it, that's what allows you to be adaptable and creative and take necessary pivots. So being fluid in that I think is, is really key. And it, it is going to change. I feel like my, my niche has changed. I think it started with a macro niche and started to get more and more micro. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, there's this, saying from a a quote from the Patriot that I love and it's aim small, miss small. And I tell my clients this, I'm like, if you aim small, you're going to miss small, you're marketing and everything. Mm, What does that mean to you? Aim small, miss small, miss small, elaborate on that. I believe if you are speaking to very specific audiences, very specific pain points with the people that are responding to that become very qualified leads and therefore your conversion rates are very high Because your message isn't getting lost in generalization. Okay. So let's take the, um, let's give people an example of that. Let's just say it's interior design. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just playing with that metaphor. So if I were to say, um, I offer interior design for, you know, I just love helping people's homes be beautiful. Okay. That's pretty big, right? Yep. Yep. How would you help me get down small? Give me an example of, of a small. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that you're bringing up interior design because I actually have an interior design team I'm working with. Uh, And they learned that theirs was bringing beautiful interior design to the everyday mom in the everyday home. So it's about getting that high quality look without paying this name brand designer and having it accessible to anyone's home. It's very Mm -hmm. affordable. It's approachable design. The everyday mom. So now I'm assuming their, their language, their marketing, their testimonials. I'm mm-hmm. looking at stuff that's going to connect with an everyday mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And someone that wants is feeling 
Uh, she's, she's just too, and they got really clear on it's, they even got clear on their target demographic, what they're bringing in income wise. And they're like, well, it's someone that doesn't want to spend money on the name brand design and that wants to feel like there's approachable design and doesn't want to do it herself. So there's a real sweet spot in the middle right there. Let's be honest, all this social distancing, working from home, educating the kids and listening to the news is more than overwhelming. It's corona whelming. Imagine if that constant buzz of anxiety or the heaviness of worry was lifted. Imagine what it will feel like when you embrace your power to make creative, thoughtful decisions about your future. Not only is this possible, it's exactly what you can expect when you apply the principles you'll learn in this powerful new course. Check out Overcoming Corona Whelm at insporising.com slash overcoming. That's insporising.com slash overcoming and use the coupon code PEACE50 for $50 off. Let's get some examples here. Let's just say that I'm furloughed or I'm, you know, tired of my job. I'm having some challenges. I'm thinking about starting something. It sounds fascinating to me, but I'm going, what, you know, I'm not sure I know what I could bring to the table. Like maybe I don't see a need quite yet, but I'm asking the question, what is it within me that, that I could do? You know, like help me with some ideas on how I could take my existing knowledge or experience and leverage that into a way to serve people, particularly maybe not a service, but something online even. Yeah. Um, this is where I think self-awareness, we tend to have a lot of blind spots on our most natural talents because it's so second nature to us. We assume it comes naturally to everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I, I know for me, something that was really helpful for affirmation on what I should be doing and what I'm naturally good at was I always refer people to the Clifton strengths finder. Like what are your Mm -hmm. five strengths? Uh, Do the disc test. I'm big on, there are many different, your Enneagram, uh, your, Uh, There's one called the wealth dynamics, which is fantastic. And all of these I say is like a little picture of uh, portions of an elephant, each assessment Mm -hmm. test. And then when you get them all together, it gives you a bigger picture and that helps you understand yourself as a whole. And so for me, I ask myself and I ask my clients, what is the problem people typically go to you for? Uh And what do you enjoy solving? And it's, you are a go-to person for something it just might be so second nature to you. You you don't you don't think about it. You're like, oh, people people are always surprised. Oh, I guess that is what I'm really good at. Um, and as far as bringing something to the online space, it's just a matter of understanding what parts. How am I a go to person, or what have I been a go to person for, and how can I provide that in the online space for people that are looking for that particular go to solution, whether it's a product or a service. Mm -hmm. So if it's a, let's see, if it's a product, it could be an information product. Yes. It could be training. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, a book or some sort of downloadable book. It could be, um, let's see what else. It could be uh, a physical product that I mail Mm -hmm. to them. That's an option. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, if it's a service, how does that, let's see, how would that play out? It could be something I do for them, but I'm just selling it on the internet. Well, for service, I would be thinking like, that's where I'm thinking, coaching, consulting, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. advertising. So um, yeah, it's, so it's just a matter of how you want to position that service to people and be like, okay, do you want to offer just a one-time consulting? Do you want to do an online course? Do you want webinars? And just kind of seeing what feels like the best fit for you. But people that are just starting out, like start small, start one-on-one, mm-hmm. uh, figure out what you are great at and continue going there. You, you, you're you going to have to embrace some failure. You're mm-hmm. going to have to embrace uh, the sucky part and be mm-hmm. like, you're going to have to embrace beginner suckiness because mm-hmm. we all start there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had a um, client and I usually uh, primarily work with women, but this gentleman, I had met him and he was just a sponge wanting to learn and grow. And I invited him into our, our training program, 85 years old, Kristen, 85 year old man. Uh, living in a home, not a, like a, um, like what do you call it? It's not a nursing home. You know what I mean? It's just like a community home yeah. of like people. And um, he needed to generate some income 
on a monthly basis. And so um, through the pro- program and through our process, you know, of course, I learned that he was a vice president of a company that made technology primarily for the government. And so I said, okay, let's go on upwork.com and I'm going to help you develop a profile. So I literally, this was during the quarantine, all right? I couldn't go to him. He couldn't come to me. I shared my screen and I helped him develop an upwork.com profile for him to offer his services to people who are developing government contracts. There were already jobs on Upwork for people looking for like, hey, we've, we're trying to get government contracts in XYZ. I need a consultant to help me walk through it. He, there were already jobs on there for that. Can you believe that? And so, you know, as people that are listening, it's like, you'd be surprised what websites like Upwork.com, if you've never heard of that, it's not just for people who do graphic design or websites or whatever. There are all sorts of things that you can offer to serve people on um, mm-hmm. there. So there's lots of opportunity. Um, and I would say, like you said, if it's something that's second nature, maybe they should ask a friend. Yeah. Like, what would they yes. ask a friend? If you called up a friend, what would you have them say? I would actually, I would say if I was to give, this is actually a great Facebook post I've seen get a lot of engagement. Uh, say, if I were to give a TED talk on anything, what would you think it would be on? Yeah. It might shock you what they yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. But also ask them to be serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that just, that just like, I mean, I guess if you want to be known for your Instant Pot recipes, great. Yeah, but you could turn that into a business. You, you could. certainly can. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, let's talk about honing into a niche, right? I know yeah. you said about the, uh, you need to see who you're going to serve, like the issue or the challenge, whatever need you're going to meet. How does a person choose a niche? How do they go about that? I think it goes to, it points back to your natural strengths and talents uh, because a niche is really an audience who is best positioned for you to serve from your natural strengths, your talents, and your unique life experiences. So when you evaluate those things about yourself, then you ask, okay, well, who is best positioned to receive all my experience that I have to offer? Is it someone 10 years younger than me, 10 years older than me? How are they consuming content? What's important to them? Uh, But typically it's, this is the audience that we actually build the most relational equity with the fastest. Uh, And it's likely people that you have things in common with. Jim Edwards says in his book, uh, Copywriting Sequence, he he says, 999 times out of a thousand, we are or used to be targets of our own market. Mm -hmm. So it might be someone who is either just like you, a few steps behind you, or was like you. Yeah. That's good. Now, um, because of your own unique experiences, you have moved into this world of coaching women, um, entrepreneurs. Tell me about your background and how that helped you choose your own, I'm going to say it the way you say it, niche. I don't want to say it wrong. You know, (laughs) It sounds so much more fancy when you say it that way too. Your niche. Uh, How did you, how, how did your experience set you up to choose your niche? Yeah. So being a professional hairstylist for 15 years, I was always the person hearing women come to me for advice. I mean, they're getting their hair done, but they're also asking for major life advice and life decisions and input. And I remember it being a joke with my stylist for years or with my uh, clients for years saying, will you just be my life coach? Will you be my life coach? And I thought it was a joke. And I learned, oh, that's actually a real thing. Uh, And then as I was, I think I've always been very creative. So it was never just hair. I found business very fascinating. So I had started a mobile wedding business. I started an online boutique business. I was in network marketing. And what I learned is that strategy or marketing is where creativity and psychology meet. And that is a form of hairstyling. Like that is also where creativity and psychology meet. So that's where I learned, okay, I'm great at conversation, great at giving guidance, great at asking good questions, people feeling uh, feeling seen, heard, and understood. Mm -hmm. And I was already coaching people for free uh, for a very long time. And that's when I realized, oh, this is 
this is a thing. And that's when I, again, started doing interviews and I looked at, okay, I have all this experience with both product-based and service-based industries. Um, I built very successful businesses there. So, and it's fun for me. So why don't I just start serving people? And I did. And then finally I went all in and got in a mastermind and hired coaches. And I took my vision very, very seriously about where I wanted to go. And and then it just blew up. It was fantastic. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. So um, you're, let's just say if somebody's listening and they're, they're going, um, I don't know, maybe Kristen could help me. Who is your, like your niche where you go, this is the type of person that I work best with. And here's how I help yeah. them. Yeah. The people I work best with are people who have seen a measure of success. They're likely already uh, in a successful career, but they are not feeling fulfilled. They're not feeling like they are living their purpose. I think they're struggling to find their purpose. I think they're saying there's got to be more out there for me. And they're very interested in diversifying their income or pivoting to an online platform of meaning and significance. Um, and honestly, a lot of people I do coach are network marketers that are in that place. I know you've got a course that's just come out. It's called The Purposeful Platform. Tell me about this and how it would benefit somebody who's listening. Yes, this is when I started working with a lot of clients, I realized that when I was interviewing someone that was making 20,000 a year, 50,000 a year to multiple six figures, half a million a year, they all were expressing the same frustrations and feelings like I'm not motivated, I'm burnt out, the hustle, I'm exhausted. Um, it's, this just isn't fun to me anymore. Work feels like a chore. And I realized uh, when we position ourselves to pursue a paycheck that will get us only so far and then burnout inevitably follows. And I believe part of the human experience is we want to operate from purpose. And I believe when we know what our big capital P purpose is and the work we're meant to do in the world and who we're meant to serve and how we serve them, that's where joy, abundance, and prosperity meet. Mm. So this is about building a platform not geared to a paycheck, but how to build a platform around your purpose so that you can serve people from that. Because that I found when people operated from a purpose, they had joy in their business. They, there wasn't so much of the hustle anymore. Mm -hmm. And they were able to withstand the frustrations and the up and downs in their business. Because if you would do it for free anyways, when there's a season where it's hard, you're going to stay in the game because mm -hmm. it's your purpose. So that's yeah. what this is all about. Teaching them the five essentials that must be in your platform in order for it to be purposeful and profitable. Hmm. Awesome. So they can go to kristenboss.com in order to mm -hmm. learn more about the course. And of course, you've got a Facebook group uh, yep. called Becoming Boss. How? Uh, who is that for? What, what will they experience there? Yeah, so I've got, it's a growing community of over 700 entrepreneurs. And that is, a it's a free community. And my mantra is I want to deliver as much value as possible. So I do mini trainings in there, live coachings, hot seat sessions. I'm always throwing in tons of value there because I believe in giving a lot to my audience. So it's like a paid community, but free. Be sure to check out Kristen's new course called The Purposeful Platform on her website at kristenboss.com. That's K-R-I-S-T-E-N-B-O-S-S.com. And all her websites and social media links are available in our show notes by swiping up on your phone now. Whether or not this is the time for you to start a new business, I want you to know that the world needs what's inside of you. You have superpowers and deep passions that we need to experience. And I want to invite you to ask the question this week, what is it that's inside of me that will help make the world a better place? And if you're struggling to hear an answer, reach out to a trusted friend and ask them that question and listen with ears to hear. We need what you have to offer.